Hey, lightweights, here's what you can expect from today's episode of L.A. Noir. Problem, Tarleson. Let him search. You got nothing to hide. Why is he doing that stink face? Like, what are you smelling, dude? You got some stinky pits or something? What's going on here? You've done. T I think that's the last place we have, right? <laughs> The white shoe slaying. Okay. Good morning, gentlemen, and what a grand morning it is, too. We have just cause for celebration. Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin. A nice showy trial, and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain. Now, the fresh Yikes. business. Galloway and Phelps, the task is at hand. The address is on the hill, north downtown off Fremont Avenue. Skipper, is the new letter genuine? Now, boys, we all know how many imbeciles have confessed in the short right. case. Ray Pinker will let I us know in good this time. Was such a nice area. It's him. A fine morning the indeed. We keep locking them up, but the bodies keep piling up. Ah, California's love a fad, Phelps. As long as the bricks hold up at San Quentin, there'll always be killers in this town to send there. I want to make. It's a really depressing way to look at. Greetings from sunny California. When's it gonna stop? Um, uh, all right, let's see here. You guys have said if I do more of like the street crimes that I'll get more points, whatever they are. <laughs> Um, and they are fun, and I had every intention of actually doing them on camera, but it, it, these main missions are just so freaking good. It's hard to find time to just justify going there. So, um, yeah, I'm not saying I won't, but also not right now. <laughs> we just have the crime scene. All right. For this one, especially because they're polar opposite sides. Oh my god, what is even happening right now? <laughs> uh, but. You can drive. I will try to be better at actually looking at the map where First I'm going, the letter, where the crimes are. First the letter, and now another and then... body. Come on, you can't keep on telling me there's not a killer still out there. You know, Phelps, all these arrests on your record are giving you a reputation. You don't want them turning into unsolved. Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows make it the man, Phelps. You can't always hit home runs. Sometimes you just gotta make first base. I, I see where they're both coming from. <laughs> Detectives? Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Scene secure. The rest of the patrolmen are going door to door, canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, detective. This looks awfully familiar. I think that's the impression the boys from the examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. Storm blew in around 10 last night, and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. Time of death. From her temperature, maybe 2 a.m. But it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. Blunt force trauma. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt very much he was concerned with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. Um. 
Anyways, what I was gonna say is I'm gonna try to do better at looking at the map and seeing where the actual place I'm going is and the street crimes are that are showing up there. And if it's not like super out of the way, I will go into them. But if they're opposite directions, I'm not gonna do them. I don't know what I can tell you. We'll have to talk later. That's fine, because I didn't mean to try to talk to you. There appears to be a dry cleaning label. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. Okay. At least we have some place to check next. Doesn't look like any jewelry is ripped off this time. So is she not married? There's definitely, that's her left hand. No ring injury there. Doesn't look like any injuries on her wrists either from jewelry. I think that's all I can interact with here. Okay. Circumstantial. I doubt it. Ah, damn it. Where's B? B. No drag marks. The killer was moving around, surveying the scene. What's that shoe? Not sure this means much. Our driver and our killer are most likely one and the same. Do they have the ability to like match tire prints yet? Should I talk to the coroner? Not now, Phelps. Well, f fuck. All right. What the hell is this? Detectives, I've been working the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Phelps, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. Did you see anyone around here last night? Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. I mean, I think she's telling the truth there. Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt, horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. All I can think of with the hobo leader is the John Wick movies. <laughs> Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, detective? I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services. 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thank you. Ah, oh, this is when I struggle because now I'm going to have two locations. <sighs> I feel like it makes more sense to figure out who our victim is before we go to the hobo camp. Because if we go to the hobo camp and we interview the suspect of like 
who this lady thinks she saw, we're not going to have any information yet. So I think this makes more sense right now. Let's see where we're going. What is this? The hobo camp. Oh. And we're not close to that yet, so we're not going to worry about it. This one's pretty close, so I think I'm gonna drive. You guys have been telling me that I need to drive more, so I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna drive a little more. Not everywhere, but this one's close enough. I will do it. Oh, slippery over here. No message. Excuse me? There was no message. Where? On the Vic. The last body's had something written on it. This one didn't. I'm failing to follow you. Can't be the same guy as what I'm saying, right? Before you start trying to link this to Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. Understand? What just happened back there? Something just fell out of the sky. And I agree with Rusty. This one doesn't fit. The other ones were all the same. This one, not the same. Did I just miss that? Well, I was gonna I was gonna say yes since it did the thing on the radio, but I missed it, so it wasn't meant to be. the rain stopped. You can change back into those white bucks now. Please, Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case and one of your laundry labels came up. F-1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register and you can take a look. Thank you. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. <laughs> you wrote the number down on that dress, is it there? F1363. F1363. Mrs. T. Terrelson, 43 Emerald Street, Westlake. Green silk dress. Okay, so now I have a name. This is close to, so I will drive there as well. But before we go there, let's just Okay, so we've got the time of death, which was, I think, two something in the morning. Yep. The laundry label, which we just used. We have boot prints, but I don't think there's a size on them. Tire tracks and the laundry ledger, which we just used for our address. Definitely think continuing on this path of finding out more about the victim first is better. And then once we have more info, then we can try to talk to the suspect. All right, let's look at my path first. So if I take a right and then just go straight, I should be good. 
I've got a feeling we're about to meet another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic types show a particular disposition for this stuff. Listen, that's the other benefit of having your partner drive everywhere. They don't crash. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Looks like a match with the ligature marks. Cool how you can see them through the window. I love how he doesn't care that there's two random strangers outside his house just looking at his boat. Hello? Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you, you describe your it? wife Oops. and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Tarleton? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. We're very sorry for your loss. It's lucky those little girls don't understand what that means, clearly. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Tarleton, but we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think it's that... procedure. You see to your girls. They clearly have no idea what was just said. Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. What's the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. You got nothing to hide. You wanna hear something funny, Terrelson? Some bums think filling out a missing persons report actually rules them out as a suspect. Incidental. Candies? Oh. Need to check and if she was a regular. Bar. See, sometimes he pitch, picks up matchbooks and he's like, oh, we need to check this out. And sometimes he's like, this is a stretch. How do you know? How do you know which is which? I wonder why the picture was turned down. Doesn't bode well for their marriage right now. Is this the purse she didn't have with I her don't last think night? So. Oh. Okay. That's creepy. Matchbook again. It's probably gonna be the same thing. Baron's bar again. Someone must be real sweet on this dive. How do you know it's a dive? Maybe it's a really nice joint. If you'd excuse me, ladies. Doesn't look like anything. Food for the needy.
But this Was bag he opens. Out, out her handbag? At least she was spared that particular indignity. Is the reason she was spared that because she didn't have her handbag with her? Probably not. She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. Muddy boots. We could see if Pinker can match the impression to the crime scene. Size eight. But we don't know what size the boots were at the crime scene. But that means he was out in the rain yesterday. Lars was out in the rain last night. Y'all. Yeah. I missed my calling. I missed my calling. Okay, and then we already checked. Okay, we already checked the boat out there. We got rope from that. Let's call. I'll be out of your way momentarily, ladies. We're gonna use the phone first, then we're gonna review our clues. Operator, and then message we'll for KGPL. Interrogate him. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car dispatched. Thanks for your help. Okay. To the clues. So this is where we looked through before. The bow rope that's the same triple braid pattern that she had on her neck, which also matches the other victims. The matchbook for Baron's bar. I don't think that's really gonna help us right now. Victim's handbag, which she forgot, so I'm not sure why that's important yet. <laughs> she left in a hurry, maybe? She looked like she was on drugs or something in that little cutscene in the beginning, so maybe she's, you know, into the heavy stuff. Men's boots wet and stained with mud. So that could potentially put him at the scene of the crime because we know he was out in the rain last night. Um, and he's got muddy boots and we know that the murderer was walking around the crime scene in the rain. So that could potentially put him there. But our eyewitness said that she saw the person early evening. So we'd need his alibi for early evening, I think. Wet men's spray jacket. But either way, we know he's outside in the evening time last night. Which I guess makes sense because he said he was out with his wife. I wish I had the weather report. I need the weather report. I need to know when it started raining. For the record, Mr. Tarleton, what is your wife's name? Teresa. We've got lots of questions for him. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. Um, so we know he's being sketchy there. Um, everyone loved Teresa. She's so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. It can't be anyone who knew her. But we think it could be him. And he's got the rope. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> shit. Couldn't be anyone who knew her, but it's always somebody who knows her. So, okay, but that doesn't help me. Where, Where is my line of thinking going right now? We know it's not good cop, so I feel like it's doubt because I don't know what we would use here. However, 
this is throwing me off. Because we're kind of like, but we're thinking it's you right now. You know what I mean? We're like, dude, you strangled her with this rope that you have on your boat. That you clearly have access to. Fuck. Fuck. Do I do... Okay. Do I do bad cop or do I do lie? <gasps> are you just holding back the truth or are you lying to me? This isn't going to help me. Oh, shit. Okay, that helped me. Because <laughs> I was going to do... Shit. Wait, it gets rid of evidence for you too? Okay, so we gotta go with the rope. We gotta go lie the rope. Accuse the rope, what lying, is this? Mark. Accuse the rope? I think you were mad at your wife for embarrassing you in front of your friends. I think you came back here and strangled her and then dumped her body on the hill. You think I strangled my wife? How do you expect to prove that? Well, this handy dandy little rope right here. Your wife was strangled with triple braid rope. The bowline from your boat is a perfect match. Look, I know this looks bad. But I'm gonna have to come to terms with the fact that I let her go. Thank God for the intuition, because I was gonna go doubt. <laughs> I was hoping it would just, it would, okay, but it doesn't matter. It worked out in the long run. <laughs> okay. I still don't know, because in my head, I think of it, I think of good cop, bad cop accused as, like, truth, partial truth lie, is kind of how I've been thinking it in my head. So, the, that's why partial truth, I thought, Jesus Christ, every time I think I understand what I'm doing, it throws a curveball at me. That's how you throw curveballs, in case you're wondering. <laughs> you said you went to a alibi? party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right, Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. Okay, 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 okay. He's being sketchy. Sketchy face. Let's see. That's right, Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. I don't think I have anything to go against that. Um, I don't think I have anything to go against that. So I think I'm going to say you're holding something back from me. You got sketchy face, bad cop. You let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. A bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin and calls me. I go and bring her home. Does maudlin mean drunk? Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. <laughs> Can you tell me you're lying any more than you're telling me you're lying right now? Um, okay. Obviously not good cop. I was thinking the picture down, but the picture down is not an option. So, I think I'm gonna do bad cop. Because I don't think any of these show me he's lying. The picture down, 100% would have, but since that's not in here. Spill it, Terrelson. Nice. We like the look of you for this, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30, maybe a little earlier. You married her because you liked that about her, but then you expect her to change. Seems like a real, real healthy way to go about marrying somebody. 
When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. I paid the sitter and went to bed. See, this is where I really need the weather report. <laughs> Looks like he's telling the truth, damn it. I'm gonna stare too uncomfortable. But he's wiggling a lot and he's blinking a lot. And I don't like that. He's not quite being sketchy, but I feel like he's being the amount of sketchy that throws me off. Like the daughter and that, that, uh, shit. The husband, was it the husband? I don't know. Two people successfully lied to me and I feel like they're making the same face. Like they weren't really being sketchy, but they were kind of like wiggling and they were blinking a lot. And you know, they weren't like looking away and being sketchy eyes, but. But here's the thing. Around 830, it doesn't really matter when the rain started, right? Because if you, if you got home at, Let's say she left at 8.30, you had the sitter tonight. Let's say you got home right at 9 p.m. It's pouring rain, okay? You get home right at 9 p.m. You hang your wet jacket up at 9 p.m. It is now almost like 24 hours since then, right? I don't know what time it is. It was dark outside. So like the next evening, okay? Why is your coat still dripping wet? Why is your coat still wet? If you put that on your hanger at nine o'clock at night, or let's even say, let's even say later than that, okay? Can I because you get the, my daughters now, dude. You just scared the shit on me. Relax, I'm thinking. Um, you send your sitter home. Maybe have a couple things to do out in the yard. I don't know. You gotta pick up the, the kids' toys. So you're still out in the rain. Let's say until eleven o'clock. Let's say you take a really long time picking up your kids' toys. You hang up a jacket at 11 o'clock at night when it's the next evening, even by 5 p.m., that shit ain't dripping anymore. That shit ain't dripping anymore. I'm sorry. It's not. It's not. So, that timeline doesn't add up in my head. So, we're gonna go accuse. You're lying, Lars. You didn't come straight home, did you? And how do you figure that? I figure that, because your jacket is still wet. Boy! You were out in the rain. <gasps> you got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. <sighs> Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. Thanks for answering our questions, Mr. Terrelson. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wife's body. I should have taken her dancing. Yeah. In my experience, Mac, if you give in to broads, you'll be giving in to them your entire life. Sounds like the Terrelson broad had her last drink at Baron's Bar. We should check the place out. Because women never give in to what their husbands want. Ever. Heaven forbid. Appreciate your When time, you have sir. a night out, you treat your wife. Heaven forbid. Nope, instead I gotta, I gotta stay here and flirt with this brunette broad right in front of her and then blame her when she says she wants to leave and go dancing. Okay. 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 You do you. Who am I to judge your marriage? Anyways. Let's go to the bar. How far is this one? I think I'm gonna have him drive here. Oh no, this one's really close. Well, shit. Fuck it, you're driving. You know the way, you can drive. You believe this guy's story? Kind of rings true. What rings true, what? Oh, it's the afternoon. Oh. Even still the coat would have been dripping. All right, my timeline was off, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Gents, drink? What? That's so Felton cool. Felton Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. 
They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. How do they know her name already? Yeah, I rang that husband of hers. The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. Interesting. Out until when? Can we talk to the babysitter? Where's the babysitter? What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around uh, 1030, I think. 1030? Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so she left the party at 830, then came here and left here at 1030? I think he's telling the truth. On foot, in a car, by bus, how was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. That's a lot of alcohol in her system. Fuck. Okay. I guess I'll ask this one next because it was already here, so... Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here. But nothing to fit that description. Why? Why are you being sketchy, dude? Shit, I got nothing for this. <laughs> um. Time of death, laundry label. That's obviously not it. That one. I think I gotta go bad cop. The likelihood okay. is that whoever she left here with killed her. Give it up, Benny. You say you like her. All Tell right, me all you know. The were all over her, promising to take her dancing. You get a good look at these guys? Sure. I got a good look. One of them was a sailor in uniform. His cap said, uh, USS Indiana. Oh, and that's why man? I didn't want to blow him in. The other guy is Richard Bates. He's sitting in the back right now. Wait. Red polo shirt. Who was the friend? Who was the friend's party they were at? Wasn't that Bates? Any idea where she was headed? Uh, nope. I didn't get that. Okay, when he said it, it seemed sketchy, but now he's not breaking eye contact. Uh, any idea where she was headed? Nope, I didn't get that. Hmm. The husband said she wanted to go dancing. That and was she a always one. wants to dance when she's been drinking. She was trying to talk some guys into taking her to one of the dance halls. Thank when you for your you're help, saying Mr. it. Boss. We'll take it from here. Hey, no problem. This is Bates. That's him. LAPD. Don't make me chase you, shitbird. Why would you even Can't put that thought the in his head? Bitch get away. Anyways, when he was saying that last one, he was like scratching his hey, armpit and looking oh. away and looking all sketchy. But then at the end, he right, was ride. just. Get in and drive. Oh. I thought you were gonna leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull Oops. when he's cornered? We could have a killer on our hands. Shit. Oh my god. Well, this is going swimmingly. Come on, Phelps, you're letting this I'm lush trying. get away from you. I don't have a freaking siren on this car. Oh my god, this is not good. Is he getting away? I guess he can't tell me I failed. Oh no, there he is. Okay. Whew. I don't Watch think out, the killer people. would be kicking back in the bar where he met the vic in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. Phelps, you gotta get me closer. 
How's Let's that? end this part. <laughs> All right, you got Is that close enough? I've had enough. Okay, I can't get out of the car though. That was weird. Put your hands in the air! I'd say we got him! <laughs> okay, Bates. You're gonna answer some questions. I have a choice in this. You just ran from us. You think you have a choice in this? Honestly. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead. And your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? Well, that's a bad cop if I ever did see one. But should we make sure that there's not a lie there? Yeah, I got none. I got none for that. Yellow cab. Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay. Drunk. Pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. Why is he keep doing that stink face? Like, what are you smelling, dude? You got some stinky pits or something? What's going on here? You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Mm. Look, I was lying there on the sidewalk. He flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. Nice private chat. I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. That poor lady was gonna be fucking having a horrible night regardless. One dude she went home with murdered her. The other dude was probably gonna sexually assault her. She just couldn't catch a fucking break. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an APB out on a yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. Were there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thanks. I was gonna say, wait, is that the one that, um... The Salty they were referring to? What do they call them? Salties? Where's my car? Okay, so we should probably go to the police station. Seems like you always want to go there first. And let's just see where that is in relation to our street crime here. Our street crime is gone, of course, because it was down here, right where I am right now. <laughs> uh, okay. You can drive this time, Rusty. You're behind the wheel. Rusty, take the wheel. Take it from my hands. That song was a throwback shit. He's in an interview, too. Thank you. Thanks. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough, who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. I've been in this job 20 years. I never fired my gun. Dude's been in this job 20 years and never fired drink. a gun? Is that what he Detectives just said? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. We know why you're here, Jessup. So it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble. That's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. 
Let's start at the beginning. I don't know. I feel like if you're guilty, you don't come down to the police station. But also, it's a good tactic to throw you off the scent. Just like sometimes people who are guilty call it in themselves because they think it'll make them look innocent. You went to Baron's Bar. What time did you arrive? I got a 24-hour pass. I got there around 7. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure. We had a couple of drinks. <laughs> well, that's not the truth. Um... So, I would say the yellow cab, but didn't they get in the cab together? Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Cab reported us picking up Teresa Charlton and a male companion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that would kind of corroborate his story that they got in, that they met at Barron's Bar, but he's definitely lying, so I think I'm going to say bad cop. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm not proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. Caught a cab to the Crystal Ballroom. You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. Again, being sketchy, but I don't think I have any evidence to accuse him of anything. He's pointing the finger directly at you, Jessup. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. Was You're she? You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. <laughs> We're holding you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. Can you put the guy in two in a cell and inform the commander? Sure, detective. I've got a message for you. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Grand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the bow has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assaults. Thanks. Okay. I think that's the last place we have, right? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I think we ought to investigate the hobo lead. Well, if you think we ought to, I guess we ought. Rusty, don't be a jerk. Okay, let's see where I'm driving to. Uh. I think. Oh, wait, my face So I need to turn around. <laughs> I guess I can just take a left on Broadway, then a left again, and then a right. Three suspects in the can and one on the hoof. And still no hard evidence on any of them. KGPL to car 11K, 11K, come in. 11K, go ahead. Patrolman reporting that Bobby Ross's car game is breaking up at midnight. 11K, roger that. Only have time to get downtown, Cole. It's possible. Have them bring him in. KGPL, can we have Lars Terrelson picked up? 11K, Roger. Okay, uh, wait. 11K, we have a response on your APB regarding yellow cab number 3591. The vehicle has been identified at a gas station. Now heading west on 7th Street. Garage on 7th Street. Let's hit it, Phelps. The cab driver might tie this whole thing together. I hope you're right. 11K, yellow cab number 3591, sighted at the corner of Wilshire and Whitmer. Repeat, Wilshire and Whitmer, 11K. Shit, I need, I need a map. Where am I going right now? Holy shit, that's far away. Okay, so if I just keep going straight until 6th, and then take a right... I could just take a. Oh, fuck, I don't know. Okay, we're going straight till we hit six. Where's that cab got to now? Get out of my way! 11K, further on your APB on yellow cab number 3591. Vehicle identified at Reggie's Cafe, heading north on Whitmer. KGPL clear. 
Ai, 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 ai. Call 11K, your suspect vehicle, yellow cab, 3591, sighted oh in God. 6 and Valencia. Why is it leaving all this place so quickly? You see our taxi anywhere? Over, people! Are we getting it any closer? I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. The search continues. Ah. Call 11K, yellow cab 3591 was just seen leaving Dewey's car sales, driving north on Union Drive. KGPL. Wait, pull over. LAPD, we're investigating a murder. What's that got to do with me? The fare you picked up from Baron's bar last night. What was the woman wearing? It's a green dress. Oh, don't tell me something's happened to her. Tell me about her. She was with this sailor, and he was all over her. She wasn't having any of it. Said she just wanted to dance. But he had that look in his eye. Where did you drop them off? He said, the Crystal Ballroom. What time? Uh, after midnight. 12.30? Something like that. Thanks. You've been a big help. Well, that's gonna ruin my day. Ruined hers too. Money in this officer needs help. 415 and shots fired. 313 Bunker Hill Avenue. 313 Bunker Hill Avenue. Unit to handle code 3 identified. It's been a while since we've done one of these, so let's do it. This music is too peaceful right now. Come on out, Jimmy. I won't let them hurt you. Not my honey boy. I told you not to call me that woman. Now shut the hell up. You shut the hell up. The hell is going on? That the lady of the house? It's a nice story. Two old lovebirds just moved in together. But they had a falling out, and he chased her across the yard with a 12-gauge. Now Tim or us. What the hell kind of falling out did you have? Get the bastard! Officer down! <gasps> Give yourself up! Now! Oh my god! You're a cop killer! Reinforcements are on the way! Cease and desist! Where'd he go?
We interrupt your murder mystery to commit a murder. Shit. <laughs> Where am I even going now? To the hobo camp. How far away is this? Not too bad, this is a pretty easy drive. It's just a left and then straight. I can manage that one. Shouldn't I go to the crystal ballroom? Like, why is that not a place? That seems pretty important. Bridge. Hello, hobos. How goes it? LAPD. We'd like a word with you. Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists. Come to move us on and steal what little we have left. Six rounds won't get us far. I need you to stay copacetic here, Phelps. We need to hold out till the cavalry arrives. How do we do that? Like this. The fuck, fuck Rusty? Down, Phelps. If you want your rightful share, these men know they're harboring murder. Why don't I have my gun? Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Kill it, dude. Punch is hard. Shit. Your disciples know what you did last night. Comrade Stalin. Very funny. We'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You. You can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done. Yikes. This is your little house? The Kremlin's over here, Phelps. Toss it, see what you find. Seems irrelevant. No, it seems like he has PTSD. That's very relevant if you ask me. Well, found a purse. Ackerman doesn't look like much of a dancer. <gasps> ooh, 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 ooh. Missing morphine. Cops say goons fighting dope war. Still working, Jack. I'm off to the Lighthouse Club in Santa Monica. Hello, Jack. Mr. Vincent, this is Courtney Sheldon. He's a buddy of mine from the war. Well, I'm sure you two will want to polish some old war stories. Good evening, Jack. Mr. Sheldon. Good night, sir. Take a seat, Courtney. We need your help, Jack. I told you I would have nothing to do with that. I'm fine too, Jack. Medical school's going well. I got a part-time job. Do dope peddlers need part-time jobs? We made a mistake and we're in trouble, Jack. Who's a we? local gangster, Mickey Cohen, is putting on the squeeze. So hand it over, walk away. What's stopping you? We had a deal with them, that they would dole it out slowly. 
they said they would supply abortion clinics and doctors. But they've been moving it on to addicts. And they can't cope with the purity. So your problem is with gangsters being dishonest. My problem is that people are dying. And that if this gets back to us, we'll all end up in jail. So how am I supposed to help, Courtney? This isn't the war. I can't just wave a magic wand and clean up your mess. We want you to negotiate, Jack. The only thing these guys understand is force, Sheldon. They got to the top back east by proving to be more vicious than the English, the Irish, and the Dutch. They make their own laws. That's the nature of a secret society. For God's sake, Courtney, you want to be a doctor. How can you fight with that? We are better trained. I didn't make it through the war to come back to this kind of shit, Sheldon. Can't wait to see how all these things connect. Okay, so we still have music going, which means I'm missing shit. Oh, like this bloody rope. <laughs> that seems pretty important. Looks familiar. Safe bet it'll match the mark under Teresa Terrellson's chin. My throat crinkles like, I want in on saying that it's all done. I feel bad for them. Capitol Records presents Marsha Tilton. With her I was going to say, wait, where's Rusty? I was going to make him drive, but I'm already in the driver's seat now, so... We're gonna take, uh, I guess we'll t the easiest way will be to take a right, take another right, and then another right. <laughs> Maybe turn around, but I think I'm under Grand Avenue. So I think I need to go this way. The husband has an alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist, he'll be Pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has history, opportunity, hard evidence. What motive? We have the evidence. We know she was here. All we need is a confession. We can charge the bum with murder. It's still really bizarre to me that we haven't gone to the um, Crystal Ballroom. I don't know. Like, I feel like we should go there and make sure that she made it and see, like, the timeline of shit. I guess it's not important in the grand scheme of things. Like, if we have, if we have the person with the bloody rope. But it just seems like we would want to follow that lead. At least I would. I would like to follow that lead. Okay, I really need to look at my evidence before I go in there. We're going this way. Also make sure there's no other locations. Okay. Let's look at our clues here. So obviously at his house, we have the blood stained rope piece. Um, the purse that says where she was, but we don't know why he was there unless maybe he was just looking to rob her and then it turned into something more. Uh, or he's still not actually the murderer. And we do have a serial killer on our hands, which is, I think, for the other ones, but I don't know about her because it doesn't fully match up. Victims' movements. Driver testifies to dropping Sharice off the companion at the Crystal Ballroom. I feel like they keep talking about the Crystal Ballroom. Why do we not go to the Crystal Ballroom? Maybe we'll go after the interview? 
Or the interrogation? I don't know. It seems like an important place to go. I'm, I'm assuming he's in two. <laughs> no. Where is he? Excuse me, Rusty. Okay. I want to make homicide. I mean, you know you've made it if you got that desk. Hello. That's Jessup. Where is this dude? Interview one. Ackerman, you were in the oh, Marines. That How do you know? <laughs> the Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government puts weight like that on a man's shoulders? You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? Yeah, actually I am. Because he clearly needs therapy and medical attention and just overall help and he didn't get it and I do feel sorry about that so why did you kill Mrs. Terrellson I have no recollection of the people I have killed so obviously that's sketchy eyes like the definition of sketchy eyes so let's look at what we got here the rope I mean that's pretty easy right Found an Ackerman's lean too. Yeah. Okay, so we got to do accuse. Are you denying that you strangled Mrs. Terrelson with a length of rope? I'm not denying anything. You have to have proof, lackey. Okay. Don't call me lackey. We found a matching piece of rope in your lean to. I think we'll find the blood will match too. I own no property. How could it belong to me? That's a fair point. <laughs> A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrelson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. Ugh. Okay, that's get you guys again. Um... So we have our purse, but is the... Okay, let me read. I do best when I reread these lines. The bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrellson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places I go where I please. So he's not denying that he was with her. Because I was thinking the purse could be useful, but he's... He's not denying that he was with her. He's just not saying which hill. So I don't think we have any evidence for the hill. We have evidence to prove he was with her. So I don't... I think this is going to be bad cop. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed, but I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrelson. So is he the serial killer? I mean, we could let the we could let the Navy guy go now. A man down on his luck, I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Did he choose that, though? Maybe poor threes of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And a grand result you have brought me. <sighs> you two are fast becoming my finest crusaders. So is he the serial killer? 
14 out of 17. Oh shit, I missed a lot of clues. The bus driver who delivered Teresa to her death might have liked a chance to testify. What bus driver? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> How did I miss a bus driver? Where did I miss a bus driver? What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> How did I miss a whole whole ass person in that investigation? Maybe I wouldn't make a good detective. <laughs> I'd be a good interrogator, but that's about it apparently. Oh, so Phelps is a regular here now, huh? guys so i looked it up um because i have i had no idea where i could have possibly missed a whole ass interview um or a person to talk to because i felt like i went to all of the different places and the locations that it said and i looked it up and it seemed like at some point phelps was supposed to tell me to go to a bus station which i don't think he did <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't think he did that and that's really funny because I did a lot more driving today so I felt like that could have been something I would have missed if I had Rusty do all the driving but I did a lot of driving so how how did I miss that I don't know but apparently I could have gone to a bus station and then there was somebody there I could have talked to the bus driver would have told me that he dropped her off Teresa off outside of the hobo camp so that would have given me information about the hobo camp. So I don't know. It's kind of bullshit that I missed that because how did I miss that? Okay, I'm gonna when I'm editing, I'm gonna have to go back and see if he said it and I just was zoning out and totally didn't hear it, which is probably the case. But if he didn't hear it, I'm gonna be so annoyed. Or if he didn't say it, I'm gonna be so annoyed. Because how am I supposed to know to go to a bus stop if nobody says, hey, we should go to a bus stop? And how are you not gonna put the bus stop in the interview freaking locations journal? Come on now. Come on now. That's not fair. That's not my fault. That's not my fault. I'm blaming glitches. <laughs> and don't tell me otherwise. Shh. It's glitches. It's glitches. I still did really freaking well there, though. I think I got all of the questions right. I just didn't ask all of the questions, so I didn't get all of the clues. <laughs> um, but those ones were really obvious, like, for the most part. I think there's one that I was not sure if it was truth or, or doubt, but... Um, um, fuck, I just totally lost my train of thought. For the most part, I feel like I, it was really easy that time saying that, like, okay, they're clearly leaving some, some info out there. Um, but yeah, I'm just really, I'm, I'm really hung up on the fact that I missed a whole ass interrogation questioning interview thing. That's really, really annoying. <laughs> Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the video anyways. If you did, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell button when you do so that you know when I post future videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you have an amazing day.